This is the Tureva Scrama, or more properly known as the Tureva Scrama 240 from Verustalica. It has been my go-to knife for wood processing for quite some time now, but that might be about to change. This is the Tureva Scrama 200. If you're interested in hearing more about the 200 and how it compares with the 240, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to declare that the Tureva Scrama 200 was sent to me by Verustalica for testing and review, and I did not pay for it. But of course, I'm receiving no compensation for the sale of any of these knives. So what I thought I would do is just take you down to the spot where I'm sitting on top of the snow, bring the 240 back into the picture so that I can compare you the two knives together, show you the similarities, talk about the differences, and tell you what I think of this in comparison with the larger one. All right, before we compare the two knives together, what I thought I'd do is just take a moment to show you the knife in the sheaf. We'll talk about the sheaf for uh, just a moment, then I'll bring the two knives into the picture, and we'll talk about the similarities and differences. So, this is the leather sheaf that comes as an option for this knife. You can, you, you can buy it just with the plastic uh, blade protector, which is identical to what is inside of this leather sheaf. There is a plastic blade protector in there. It's what gives form and structure to the sheaf, so if you don't want to pay the extra money for it. That's what I did with my original 240. I decided to go with just the plastic sheath, which I used for a long time until it got destroyed in a fire this summer past. And if you want to know more about that story, that's in the video review of the 240. But uh, yeah, it is just a good plain leather sheath. When you look at it, it looks a little different. You think you want to wear it this way, but in fact you don't. It's right hand set up. It does have a dangler. It does have a retention strap. There is friction retention with the plastic insert, but uh, if I turned it upside down and gave it a shake, I could cause it to fall out. So when I'm wearing this on my belt, I, I do use the retention strap. The plastic insert does have a thumb ramp so that you can push off to remove the knife from the sheath. And uh, yeah, good to go from there. All right, what I will do is I'm going to give you very few specifications because I'm going to list them all in the video description below. Much of what I say about the 200 applies to the 240. So they're in many ways almost identical knives except for the obvious being the length, the handle shape, which I'll talk about, and the weight. So I won't, again, I won't spend too much on it. So what's similar between the two of them? Well, the two of them are made from identical steels. The 80 CR V2, hardened to a Rockwell hardness of 59 on the HRC scale. Uh, it is good to note that the way the heat treat is done on these knives, it is a little softer on the outside flats and edge, back edge of the knife than it is in the center. And what that allows for is a little bit more durability, a little bit more flexibility under heavy stress. But it's also the reason why there is a angle ground into the top of the knife in order to get down to that harder steel that you can use for striking a ferrocerium rod or scraping bark or scraping uh, fat wood or whatever else you wanted to use it for. They both have that same sheep's foot shape with a slight rock to the blade, which is great for if you're, I suppose, if you wanted to use these heavy knives for game processing or at least making your dinner up, then you could because they both have that shape, which does lend itself well to that. They both are full tang with a protruding loop on the on the end, so it's not a full broad tang. It is a stick tang, but it is almost the same thickness of the over-molded handle, so there's another similarity. They both have the same over-molded rubber handle, which has good texture, good grip, and good durability. So yeah, a lot of it is the same. They have the same edge geometry on both knives. So the forward part, let me lay the big one down, the forward part here is ground at a 34 degree angle for uh, chopping and that's a more durable edge yet the last two inches from here to here are ground at a 25 angle so that's be for finer work of carving feather sticking or anything else you need that extra sharp maybe a little less durable than the forward edge but extra sharp edge back here and it does make a difference okay a lot of similarities, but what's different? Well, let's bring the two of them back in and we'll talk about them. Now, this is kind of a difficult. All right, the length. Let's talk about the length overall. So the total length of the 240, this one here, is 16.9 inches. Yet the total length of the 200 
is 13.8, three inches longer. The 240 is three inches longer. By the way, the 200 and 240, that stands for the length of the blades, 200 centimeters and 240 centimeters for the larger them. So that's what it would be in metric. And as I didn't mention, I'll mention again, both of them, uh, all the information will be in metric and in imperial in the video description below. All right, so we have a longer overall knife. I'm trying to get them both into the frame at the same time. All right, there we go. Longer overall knife, but the blade is also longer. So like I mentioned, 240 centimeters for the this one, 200 centimeters for this one. The handle is also longer on the 240. And what makes up the difference, and this is probably one of the things that is most significantly different is with the larger knife, the 240, you know that there is a two position grip. The back of the grip is standard like it would be on most knives with just a palm swell and a little bit of a choil on either side of that palm swell for holding on to. And then there's another choil forward of that to get up close, really close. So you can get right up on top of that 25 degree angle edge and it works really well. The idea is this is the balance point right about here on the knife. You can do some fine work with it there Yet when you want to get the maximum power that this knife uh, allows you, you go back to the full grip or even further back onto the very last portion of it, way back here. And because of the length of this knife and the weight, you can get some serious chopping abilities. Now I've mentioned in the other video, chopping is not something I do a lot with these knives. It's nice to have it. I will do some limbing with it, but taking down large trees, no, that's, the, that's an area for a saw or an ax, not a knife in my opinion, but that's okay. If you have a different opinion, that's fine. That's just the way I like to use my tools. All right, so what's different about that? on the 200? Well, the 200 only has the back half of the grip of the 240. Can you see that? It just has the back half. So it's a standard grip like you might find on most knives. It does not have that forward choil, so the, the entire length of the grip is shorter. But at the same time, it doesn't sacrifice any of that control that you want when you want to get right up to, on top of that 25 degree edge. In fact, the, it has that same rubber extension that comes up over the top of the blade, allowing you to get your hand, uh, the web of your hand, literally right over that edge. So you have maximum power, maximum control with this knife. You can still choke back on the handle. You can still get some really good chopping ability. However, not as much as the larger knife. Okay, so those are the same or what's similar and what's different about the two of them. Uh, what are my thoughts on this? Well, as I mentioned in the other video that I reviewed, the 240, this has been my go-to wood processing knife. I'm not carrying an axe and more often than not, this rather than an axe or even a hatchet, this is what I do carry. I can chop with it. As I mentioned, I don't do a lot of chop with it, but I split a lot of wood with this. So, and I'm very comfortable uh, doing so with this knife. I, I, it's just so durable. It's the knife that I think I mentioned, it's ugly enough that you don't mind beating on it and, and scarring it up. And I haven't, I've had some scars on it, but nothing that makes it, uh, has damaged it in any way. So if you want to know more about my thoughts on the 240, again, the link to that, this video will be at the end of this video and in the video description. The one thing I hold against this knife or the one thing that I had wished for the longest time was that it was lighter. And the reason is I find this too big a knife to carry on my belt. Now you may different, you may like carry big heavy knives in your belts, but I found, uh, yes, maybe when I was doing a little trail work or doing a little brush clearing, but other than that, this was just too big. It was dragging my pants down and I had to use suspenders to keep my pants up. So it resides in my backpack until I need it for wood processing. It's just a, a little too big. That's the only thing I would have to say in terms of a con for this larger knife. Now, this knife is something altogether different. This is something that I will carry on my belt. This is not that much smaller, but smaller enough that it is more comfortable, lighter, and uh, yeah, just easier to carry on my belt. It has almost all the capabilities of the larger knife in a slightly lighter, shorter package. Everything that I want to do with this knife or do with the larger one, I can do with this knife. It, despite the fact that it is a little shorter, there's still plenty of blade there for batoning through 
pretty good sized pieces of wood. As big a piece of wood as I would probably baton with any knife, anything bigger than this would handle, there's the territory for an axe for sure. So yeah, this has all the capabilities for my intended uses that the, small, that the bigger one has, just a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter. A couple of things I've noticed about using this knife for limbing is that it's faster. The bigger knife has more centrifugal force because of the length of it, but this one is easier to use for snap cuts and recovers quicker back into my hand. Doesn't tire me out as much. This knife is also easier to feather with. I will give you a quick demonstration in a moment, but it's easier to feather with because I don't have that extra length out here moving around when I work with the knife. The shorter knife handle on this is just a little bit more maneuverable, a little bit more comfortable to use. It's just, you know, I think now, unless I really am gonna be doing some big wood processing, this is the knife I'll probably grab more often. Okay, I said I'd give you a quick demonstration of what it's capable of, so why don't we do that now? All right, let's do a quick demonstration of using the Travis Gramma 200 for some wood processing. Again, it's not something I'm going to spend a lot of time on because, as I said, it's so much like using the 240, especially in this uh, use right here, that uh, there's not much more to show. So I'll split this down. I have a piece of black spruce, about 16 inches long, inch and a half, inch and three quarters in diameter. Black spruce can be fun to split because sometimes the grain twists, but I don't think this is an issue at all for this knife. I am on top of a huge rock here and I just want to make sure I don't smack it into the ground. Can you see the twisting in that grain? That's the reason why you wouldn't think spruce could be that hard to split. Let's see if I can get a piece out of this I can do a little bit of feathering with. So I'll quarter. Man. There's one, let's try the other piece that went for a little fly. Yeah, I think this will be the piece I'll try to do a little feathering with. So I'll just reposition the camera so I can show you a little bit of feathering with the Travis Grandma. See what I can do with this. So I'm going to work back to where the 25 degree angle is and I can get the most control with the knife. Lots of nice little not in the wood because of course it is black spruce. Little challenge in keeping the feathers on the sticks because of those knots. Let me try it on the other end. See if that works any better. I'm going very slow and actually not very long strokes. I should be doing longer strokes to get bigger curls, but what I can say is it's not taking a lot of pressure. There are some finer curls happening now. In fact, this is so sharp that I'm working to make sure that I don't bite in too deep. All right, I would not classify that as a feather stick, but I think it demonstrate that this knife with a little practice can be used for feathering quite well. The only other thing I'll do right now is just give you a quick demonstration of using it with a ferrocerium rod. This is more about showing you how I would use a ferrocerium rod with a large knife like the Tereva Scramma more than it is an attempt to actually get a fire going. If I get one going, great. If I don't, I think you'll get the point of how this is supposed to work. And the reason I'm a little iffy about whether or not I'll get the fire going is um, I've got some fine curls, but not probably fine enough, fine enough to accept a spark from a ferrocerium rod. But we'll see. I'll give it a shot. But I think it's a bit, the point will be made regardless. So... The back edge of the Tereva Scramma is sharp enough to strike your ferrocerium rod with, but this being a big knife, my technique is to 
lay the knife across the feather stick or down across a piece of wood so that I can control the knife better when I'm using it to strike the ferrocerium rod. So rather than run the knife back, the back edge of the knife up and down the ferrocerium rod, I'm going to take the ferrocerium rod and run it across the back of the knife. Find the edge, as I mentioned, there is a slight degree of angle, so you do have to work a little bit. And I'll move it in just a little tighter there. Yes, I did get it going. Didn't expect to. All right, lost it. All right, but probably go with one more try. Okay, rather than a demonstration of fire making, the point of this was how is, or what is the best method for using the Trevor Scramma for striking a ferrocerium rod. Okay, I think we've shown enough now. Let's wrap this video up. So once again, this is the Tereva Scramma 200, the shorter and lighter version of the Tereva Scramma 240. Shorter and lighter, but not short on performance. In fact, I do believe this will become my primary carry knife, unless I expect to do some really heavy uh, work with wood. This is going to be a little lighter, a little easier to carry. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's everything the big brother is and it's just a slightly smaller, lighter package. That's the only difference between the two of them. A little bit of, you're giving up a little bit of performance by giving up a little weight and length, but not that much, and only if you're chopping. Okay, those are my thoughts on the Treva Scramma 200. Uh, I'd be interested in hearing yours. Have you any experience with this knife? Would you purchase one of these knives and which one it would be if you would purchase one. I will of course put the link to both of these knives in the video description below. So once again, if you have any comments on this knife or this video, please put them in the comments section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.